Hi, I'm Rebecca Sharkey and I'm a small business coach and uh, I'm lucky enough to be a guest on the Online Prosperity Show. Uh, the show itself is called The Art of Networking where I share some uh, do's and don'ts of networking. Uh, I relate to you how to look at uh, networking and how to include it and the value that you will get from networking. Welcome to yet another exciting episode of the Online Prosperity Show. And today I've brought you the marketing business coach, Rebecca Shaki. Rebecca, how are you doing today, my love? Hey, I'm wonderful. Thank you so much for inviting me on. This is awesome. I'm having fun already. <laughs> Absolutely. I know because what you do helps other businesses uh, to actually grow and through networking, people get to actually find out and also, um, you know, expand on who they are and how they can actually help others within the community. Now, me being African and, you know, being brought up in a community, we've got a um, statement that I've seen written on your website that if you want to go far, you go alone. But if you want to go further, you go together. So successful businesses and successful business owners know that you are the sum total of the people that you hang around with. And if your network is not as strong as what you want your net worth to be, then you're only just trading waters. Now I've brought you today, um, Rebecca, to just give us brief outline of the basics in networking because as she has told me earlier on networking is actually an art form and if you're not doing it well you might as well just go home now rebecca i could go on and on and on about all this but the whole show is about um you and your new um you know networking uh group that you've just started tell us a little bit about yourself and how you got started um in marketing awesome okay wow well. What an introduction, thank you. Um, I guess I guess I, I refer to my networking business as the business I started accidentally. I certainly didn't start out that morning to start a business uh, networking uh, group. How it came about is uh, as I was um, making myself, sort of moving out of partnerships and contracts that I've been involved in, um, I was able to start my own brand, work under my own name. And as I was sitting here in my office one morning, I realized that, uh, well, you know, I need to join a networking group. I need to start getting myself out there as myself. And uh, after doing a quick search online, I found that in our local area, so I'm in the northern suburbs of Melbourne, um, Doreen specifically, that there was nothing... Uh, ongoing there was no regular meetups and and things like that so in the area that i'm in uh the community as a whole is is quite big on facebook and uh so i, I just put a, a i just posted something one night and i actually got 40 40 plus responses about you know hell yeah i'd love a networking when are you doing it da, da, da. and i was a little bit um surprised at the number of responses but also um I was able to see that there was a need there that wasn't being filled, that there was a gap. And uh, I simply just, you know, came up with a date and a venue and I said, well, you know, if you're interested, turn up, you know, let's meet, let's talk about this. And uh, to our first meeting, I believe we had 25 people turn up, uh, which was a fantastic result, I thought. And from there, uh, people were looking for a structure, a commitment, a um, something that was regular and ongoing. Um, a group of um, like-minded, you know, business owners that the majority of everyone in the room worked by themselves. The majority of everyone worked by themselves. So to be able to come together in a group, in, a, in, in our own little community and to learn from each other, to lean on each other and to support each other, um, it, that, that's what I got from that initial meeting. And that's how I started networking for small business. Um, created some structure around it, created a membership around it. Uh, and we've been going now, I think we started early May or mid May we started and um, here we are now at the end of September and we're, we're going strong and about to put on our very first uh, evening or nighttime event that's open to all small businesses in the local area. So can't remember what your question was, but did that answer it? 
Oh yeah, absolutely. Thank you so much for you. Um, you know being forth with with that sort of information. Now, a lot of people that will be watching this show right now, Rebecca, are small to medium businesses that are on a mission to create a business that's profitable and enjoyable. When you're working on your business, you never have time to entertain other people. How valuable is networking uh, in and of itself, like you say, um, to somebody who is running a small business uh, by themselves? It, it's super valuable. We, um, you know, and I think that, that quote that I've got on the website sums it up perfectly. You know, we, we might hear about, you know, on Facebook or whatever social media platform that we're on, we might hear about these, what seems to be overnight success. You know, one day I was earning, you know, nothing and I was, you know, scrabbling and hustling to get by. And the next day, you know, two months later, I'm, I'm earning this massive amount. And there's a lot of stories like that on the internet. But a lot of that, I don't, I don't believe. Like, honestly, there's so much hard work that goes on in the background that nobody sees. And we don't do it by ourselves. We do it by connecting with others. We do it because we just can't be everything to everyone in our business. So we do need that mentorship, that community, that um, the sharing, the, the learning of each other. It is so important and it's something that, you know, especially if you're working, working by yourself um, and, and now with the influx of people working from home, it can be hard, really hard not seeing another person, <laughs> you know, um, one day, two days, three days, you know, a whole week at a time. So to be able to get outside of your own four walls, to get to any networking event. And, and when I say that, it's not just specifically networking events. It's, it's going to that conference that's being put on in your nearest capital city. That's a networking opportunity for you to connect with like-minded people. I've made some really good friendships, some really great friendships just by doing that. Um, and that we continue online because we're not in the same state, etc. So, you know, anywhere where there's a gathering of small business or other people like you, that's a networking opportunity for sure. And um, really, really encourage everyone to to build those relationships, you know, whether it's what, with one person or half a dozen, just to find your own tribe and to reach out and create your own, your own network, whatever that looks like to you. Absolutely. Um, I mean, obviously, like you mentioned that um, the, the whole importance of it to actually hear other people's stories, because I believe we're here to leave, we're here to learn and we're here to contribute. And we can't all learn um, the same things uh, at the same time. So some people might have gone through certain things that you haven't uh, gone through as a person and you might just learn off of their mistakes or off of their successes so that you can um, you know uh, lessen your learning curve uh, to achieve whatever results that you might anticipate um, from that now when you go to a networking event um, there's a tendency of people um, jumping in and wanting to meet everyone um, in, in the room apparently they call it working the room what are your views um, about that sort of uh, behavior and does that normally happen at your events? First up, no, that does not happen at our events. Um, <laughs> I think um, it is, it's interesting because I, I had this conversation this morning. Um, we had our one of our regular meetings and we talked about the exact same thing. Um, Look, there's many different ways of approaching the networking event. Of course, it depends on what type of event it is. But generally, no, not working the room. I think, and we had a discussion about this, and our sort of overview was, you know, if you're going to go work the room, you actually walk away. You might have met everybody, but you actually walk away with nobody. Um, so, and this is where our conversation went, is that, you know, whatever the networking event is, to go in with an intent and intention. So set your intention beforehand of, you know, what's your actual purpose of going to the meeting? Is it to literally to um, meet potential people that you could become a customer? And that could happen. Um, or is it to uh, meet other business owners that you can collaborate with or create a joint venture with? You know, what, what is it to do? Um, so set those intentions in the very beginning of how it's going to be. I think when um, networking, a big mistake that people make is um, one that if I'm not interested, just say I'm not interested in that person's product, then that person um, mistakenly can just write me off as it were. But 
what we need to understand is that I'm not just I'm not just representing me. I'm representing my many years in small business and all my clients and customers and people and my networks that I have. It's not just for me. So even though your product may not be for me, I know in my network of you know hundreds and hundreds of people of someone that it could be for. So I think um, if you jump to that conclusion, then um, it's not going to get you far, unfortunately. The other mistake and myth too is that networking. Uh, you know, some of the feedback I've had is that oh, you know, I can't kind of step out of my business. Once a, once a fortnight, you know, can we do it monthly instead? And I think um, to be successful, you need to change your mindset. You need to have a look at your mindset because, you know, networking actually has the word work in it. It is work. It's just done perhaps in a different venue, in a, um, a different atmosphere, in a different place, in a different way. We are certainly not there just to, you know, shoot the breeze and, and um, you know, have a coffee and she'll be right. Uh, it certainly is about um, building relationships. It's about exactly what I was talking about before. So I think if, um, you know, if, if that's your view of networking, then perhaps try on a different perspective, that it is still working. It's simply working in a different way. Um, now, the other thing, I, and, and tell me if we've got time about what not to do at a network. Okay, thank you. Uh, so another thing of let's just say what not to do is to just go ahead and force your business card into somebody else's hand. Uh, this literally happened to me a number of years ago and as I was relaying the story this morning, there's actually a woman in the room who was part of the group I was in where this woman came up and just, you know, passed, shoved these business cards into our hands and ran off. And we're all just looking at each other going, what just happened? Who was that crazy lady? <laughs> and, you know, we couldn't find a rubbish bin quick enough because that left, that was just a terrible way of doing it. So what I was uh, relaying to the group this morning was, you know, try, try, something, try something different. We have to be so careful these days with the legalities of adding people to our list, okay? So we actually have to have permission by people um, to add them to our email list or whatever other list we've got going on. Um, and one way of doing that at a networking event and is to actually have some content. You've probably got some already prepared or if not, put something together that can be of value to the people that you're about to meet. So that when you're having a conversation, you can say, you know what, I've got something um, that I think you'd really like. Can I send that to you? And that's asking their permission just to send them something really cool and valuable so it has to solve a problem for them. But if you take their business card and then you send that email off the following day, um, and then you can ask them to opt in to your email, um, your email list. And then they can, they've made that choice and they need to make that choice for legal reasons. Otherwise, you know, if we, if we walk away from a networking meeting or anything uh, and we've just because we've got somebody's card, that does not give us permission to add them to the list. Okay, that's considered spam. That's not cool either. So uh, some advice would be rather than giving your business card out, collect business cards of, you know, only if it's, you know, going to be a match where you can actually send that person something of value and then build that relationship. Look, if you don't have content, if you're really just starting out, you could ask them, look, can we get can we get together and have a coffee at some stage and continue this conversation? But definitely always, if there's somebody in front of you that um, you can see some potential in for both of you, um, then follow that up with content or with a, a call or a coffee or something like that. That's a really nice way, I believe, of doing it. Absolutely. I like how you say you, you, when you're at a networking event, better be the receiver um, of the business cards than the giver of the business cards. Um, I mean, yeah. speaking of networking, the last time I went to a, an event, I actually had somebody pull out the last business card that he had and he's like, no, I can't give you this one. And then he pulled out a business card from somebody who had just given him a card and scraped off all the names and wrote his details at the back. Um, it's a good thing we'd had a chat, but I also just felt like, okay, if I can't get your last business card, then what good is this relationship going to be like? You know what I mean? Who are you saving wow. that one for? Um, wow. So it's, it's, 
<laughs> it's one of those things. Now, there's also a, a, a thing about going to networking events and then you meet certain people all the time. Do you have techniques um, on how you can help people uh, to remember people's names? Um, because as um, Del Carnegie says uh, in his book, How to Influence People and uh, Win Friends, is somebody's name, Rebecca, is the sweetest sound they could ever hear, um, you know, uh, yeah. in their ears. So have you got any techniques that you help people out with so that they can remember people's names? Look, just a few basic ones, I think. Um, and that is to use their name in the conversation. So, you know, and, and that helps you remember, you know, neurologically, it helps you remember. So you can say their name three times without it sounding weird. Okay. <laughs> you know, um, and also, you know, and something that's really important and I think is really obvious, but, um, you know, sometimes we need to be reminded, listen to the other person, actually pay attention, look them in the eye. Don't be talking to them and looking over their shoulder for the next best thing, all right? People can, feel, we feel that, all right? We see that, we feel that. We don't wanna feel that small, you know? So when you're with someone, be with that person, be totally present, you know, offer, add on to the conversation and let it be all about them, okay? No, none of this, oh, oh that happened to me too and bloody, bloody, blah, blah, and oh, I know what you mean and bloody, and you go on with your story. Listen to them, be present to them, look them in the eyes and say their names and their name a number of times, you know, and leave them feeling better than, than when you first met them, yeah? Absolutely. I like that statement, leave them feeling better um, than you found them. Um, it uh, reminds me of my um, grade school days where we had to clean the bathrooms every time we left them. They said, leave it in the, the way you found it. And it's been something that I carry on. So obviously, if you make somebody's day, they would definitely um, have positive feelings and would obviously re recommend people to you. Um, you know, in terms of business. Now, you did also uh, touch upon something that a lot of people don't quite grasp. Um, in life, we've got six degrees of separation or in the online world, they call it six pixels of separation. And they have, um, they have um, made studies and found out that an average person or an average business person can relate and know at least 250 people behind them. So if somebody is not a perfect uh, fit for you right about that time, you can always ask for um, a, re a referral from them or strike up, um, you know, uh, maybe um, a need for a, a strategic partnership with that person. Now, yeah. how do you normally uh, maybe help people approach that topic? Because some people, uh, might find out later on that you're in the same field and they have this scarcity going on and say, ah, oh, I don't want to talk to her. We're competitors. How can people strike um, up conversations to actually then, um, you know, uh, end up walking away with not a client, but with a strategic partner who can help them in the future? Yeah. Great, great question. Great discussion. Um, I think in the first instance, <laughs> Um, like I mentioned before about setting your intentions on, on what you want to achieve from the meeting, I also think of um, before the actual event, just having a look at your mindset and where you're coming from. And I think um, competitors to some people, like sales, <laughs> is, a, is a bad word that I want, that I want to bar of it. But in actual fact, um, you know, again, it's it's all about the perspective that you bring to it. Okay, so you know, somebody could what what you want to look at uh, is well, who's that person's target market? Are they the same? Do we have the same avatar? And then look at their product. Is it the same or is it different? Now, if it's different and you've got the same avatar, well, there's an opportunity there. You know, so and um, so so looking at it in that particular way. Also what I'm finding is uh, the, the term coach and coaching, there's, there seems to be a lot of them around right now. The market could be perceived a bit as being saturated. However, you know, as a small business owner, 
it's it's very uh, we're very attached to what we do. We're very unique in what we do. It's almost like a fingerprint. Okay, it's um, we've all got different ways. We've all got different experiences. So even though somebody might say that you know they do the same kind of thing as you, explore that more. If you find yourself in front of that person at a, at a networking event, just explore them or be really curious about what exactly it is they do, how exactly they help, who exactly is their avatar, and there will be. Um, there'll be some similarities, but there'll be lots of unique and wonderful differences as well. And it's the differences that we can work on together and, you know, share, collaborate and create some really cool strategic alliances. So I think look at your pers perspective and be really open and curious um, about the person in front of you about, okay, I can't, you know, you're not my avatar, but how else can we work together? How else can we combine our efforts to create something really cool? Absolutely. Well, this has been fantastic. I really, really enjoyed learning a lot more about what it is that you do. And I'm supposing the people that are watching this show right now are now sitting on the edge of their seats, wondering how they can, um, you know, jump onto your next uh, networking event. Can you tell us a little bit about um, how people can um, join your, your groups and where they can find you? Yeah, absolutely. So if you just go to uh, networkingforsmallbusiness.com.au, uh, you'll find us there. You'll be able to um, fill out a form. You'll be able to chat to us on a chat bot. Uh, we have regular meetings, which guests are more than welcome to come to. There's absolutely no fee. Uh, and we love having guests. We often have um, guest speakers. So if you think that, you know, there's something that you can talk to us about and, and help us with for, you know, anything between 15 and 30 minutes, get in touch. We'd love to have you along for sure. For sure. Absolutely. Great stuff. I mean, obviously, there could be something that we would have left out in the interview. Is there something that you would like to leave um, with us as a um, um, you know piece of advice that people should do the next moment they step into a networking event. The next moment you step into a networking event, I really, really, honestly um, would suggest that you you develop a relationship. You go there for a relationship, okay? Develop the relationship. Get to know the person, and uh, make sure that. Um, Give more value than be a giver, not a taker. Absolutely. Absolutely. Well, I'm hoping that we have actually networked uh, today, Rebecca. I can't thank you enough for your time and the knowledge that you've just dropped on this show. Just like uh, uh, Rebecca says, you want to go out there, set an intention, let um, the next people know that you are out there to offer value and as you all know that people get paid in direct proportion to the value that you bring to the marketplace. Now, this has been Prosper with Rebecca. Thank you so much for tuning in today. Thank you.